Bard's Craft is back. Welcome to my new workshop. Today we are making a poisoned well diorama as requested by one of my patrons. Okay, we begin with a hardboard base and some XPS foam as usual. Since I have plenty of excess foam from construction work, I'm gonna use a big chunk to carve out cliffs from. Most of this will be carved away, so it doesn't matter if we get some unclean cuts. Okay, on top of this goes another smaller chunk of foam. Good, next I glued on the bits. I used a few sticks to make the bonds stronger. Next I made a very epic plan. Then simply cut away material to shape the ground and cliffs. Outside is better and it's easier to clean up. While at it, I also made some stone textures on some of the steeper areas. Okay, here it is. I redrew my roads and streams to visualize the terrain better. Here there will be a bridge. The source of the stream is this mountainous well that is still missing the mountain part. I made the missing bit from more foam. I carved a small cave into the mountain. Here water springs forth and several caverns branch into the mountain. When I was happy with the cave I glued the piece on and placed on one extra bit on top. I made sure a miniature fits here. Then I decided to carve the stream using fire, outside to die less. The the smoke and the gases are toxic. Okay, pretty ugly, but this will have to do. I continued shaping the stream a bit with a small blade. Then it was time to texture the rocky surfaces with an aluminum foil ball. Okay, these bits are going to be bricks that will work as pavement for the roads. I got these without too much care to get varying shapes and sizes. The bricks were easy and fun to glue on. I placed the bits in such an arrangement that the road doesn't look too uniform. It's okay if some bricks are out of line, missing and so on. To further indicate that this place is near civilization, I lined the borders of the streams and pond using the remaining bricks. Okay, what do we have next? Some pillars should be nice. I cut some larger bricks and shaped simple tops for the pillars. Just cut each corner diagonally. After cutting the bits I got the idea to 
glue them together in a odd way, like this. Looks pretty cool, I like it. I recommend using cocktail sticks to get these in place better, I couldn't find any. To finish off the pillars I surrounded them with bricks. Then I made two more just for good measure. Alright, I went out again, this time to apply sand on the terrain. First I covered all the desired areas with a thick coat of PVA glue. I made sure to leave the most rocky surfaces untouched. When I was happy I sprinkled on the sand. Okay, I had two little rocks that I decided to glue on. Just plenty of glue, some smaller rocks and then sand should do. When using sand and stones for terrain, I suggest cleaning them first. Put sand in the oven at high temperature and rinse off larger rocks with detergent. That should do. After removing the excess sand, I touched up some uncovered areas at the stream and at the side of the road. And I needed to get much more sand into the cave. Next I got the good idea of applying the gravel on some places in the stream. This will hopefully look good once I get the water effects in. I might even try creating waves and ripples, we'll see. The dried branches of a juniper tree will work great as trees. These look good just as they are, so I won't even bother painting them. I'll glue them on after painting the diorama. I started base coating with a black acrylic paint, then remembered I still had to texture the pavement, so I did that before continuing. I also added some nicks to the pillars as extra detail. After I got a nice black base coat I painted the sandy ground with brown. Still didn't know what to do with the stream so I left it black. Then I took a green paint and continued brushing the ground. I applied this unevenly and blended it into the brown. Should look something like that after some good brush flapping. Okay, I went ahead and mixed some yellow into the brown green and lightly applied that on some areas. Not bad. Back to the brown. The pavement bricks can be of many colors. We have brown, beige, and even blue. I think I'll go with the same colors here as in my last autumn themed build, the autumn temple. Alright, I mixed a dark blue and overbrushed the pillars. Here I have less paint on the brush in order to mostly hit the edges of the stonework. Next I dry brushed with just blue. As you can see, it's very easy to make at least moderately enchanting stonework. Even you could do it. To finish this off, I brushed some of the edges and tips lightly with white. I then remembered I had this different blue. I applied this on some areas of the pillars to add a hint of varying color. 
Alright, let's move to the cliffs. I first overbrushed with a dark grey. Then grey. This grey was also used to dry brush the road. As you can notice, I have also worked the edges of the stream with these colors. After that comes a really light grey. I'll add oil washes later, so it's quite okay if this looks a bit too bright now. Then, of course, I also dry brush the roads with this bright grey as well. My next idea was risky. Here we have my version of autumn grass flocking. Just cut up hemp rope with some old green flocking mixed in. To apply the flocking I covered most of my greenish brown areas with watered down PVA glue. Then sprinkled on the flocking carefully, then less carefully. Whatever, just get the stuff on. After removing the excess, I did not regret. I decided this was good. A good beginning, to say the least. I continued by doing the same for the rest of the diorama. My sieve was somewhere, but nowhere to be found. As you can see, applying this by hand isn't the most optimal method. The flocking clumps, which makes it tricky. Anyway, I made sure that some spots are really heavily covered. These represent thick grass or grain patches. Or then a farmer has accidentally dropped all of his hay. We'll never know. Do you know what's really nice? Being able to buy food. Yes, luckily this video is sponsored by Lord of the Builds. On this fairly new YouTube channel, Benjamin makes miniature dioramas, certainly in a different, more detailed way than I do. If you like this sort of stuff, I recommend you go check out his channel from the link in the descriptions, and you'll surely get some good tips for your crafts. Let's see what this channel has to offer. Thanks. Next I made higher patches of grass from hemp rope. Here it would be best to pre-color the rope in yellow, green, red or orange. I, however, decided to color some of these grass tufts later. Applying these a bit here and there was easy with a bit of PVA glue. Placing down groups of tufts seems to be effective. Placing these near rocks and other landly protrusions is also a good idea. After about 30 tufts I was pleased with the results. The addition of these peasant level tufts made the wilted grass coverage much more lush and lively. Usually I'd seal the flocking by spraying water down a glue, however this time I tried a fixative spray. After drying I checked if it worked. It did. No flock blew off. Very epic, now we're making the water of the stream from epoxy resin. Since you liked my previous talk about discipline, I present to thee now the art of ultimate self-realization. If you're anything like the standard YouTube addict, you're probably always waiting for good things to happen, or waiting for that magical then or when. When I have more time or money, I will pursue my path of greatness, one might say. Well, that's... that sounds rational, but it's absolute garbage most of the time. Instead, I propose to you immediate action. Start doing the difficult and epic deeds now. Blame no one else than yourself for your misery. For the power of tremendous change lies within the individual, regardless of circumstances. Make the necessary sacrifices and through your perpetual increase in self-responsibility will you find a truly superior, heroic way of being. Best of all, this is for everyone. Good luck. Alright, I wanted the resin to get stickier so I waited. Meanwhile, it was a good time to paint the bottom of the stream. 
Um, I have to admit, almost forgot that. For painting, I used brown, green and blue. I sloppily applied these in the stream, blending the colors together in a grey, brown, green, blue transition. When you use a wet brush, the blending process is quite easy and forgiving. Too much blue, smudge more, brown green, on, and so on. To learn better coloring of water effects, you can see how I colored the water in this video. Okay, when I was happy with the mess, I re-highlighted the edges of larger stones with a tan. Okay, the resin. I have no idea how this will work, because the water is not flat. I just poured some of it to see what happens. If you do something similar, make sure that your resin doesn't pour onto your table. Hmm, there seems to be hope. The water stays in the stream, it's nicely reflective and magnifies the depth of color from my half-assed water paint job. Then I made sure it's level. Some water almost poured over the tile borders. I scooped up what I could and kept filling gaps. Alright, time for the nasty stuff. To create poison from the remaining resin, I took some of this green oil paint and mixed it in. This paint mixes well with the resin, thanks to whoever pointed that out to me. I poured this into the well, swirling it about for the best look. This worked okay, but I wanted a more visible sickly green. What shall we do about that? I mixed yellow into the resin. This acrylic paint won't mix that well, but screw that. Now that's better. This stuff was also getting quite thick at this point, so other creative applications became possible. Again, swirling about with the stick does the trick. Yes, this was just what I wanted. I put most of the stuff near the first pool and less down along the stream. With that done, I tried applying the resin in other places. I made the mouth of the cave real nasty using this sticky, soon to be hardened resin. Next up are the bridges. Today I made extremely simple wooden bridges from textured craft sticks. You don't always have to impress yourself, sometimes it's good enough to impress your schedule. Washes. A brown oil wash is made from oil paint and white spirit. I applied this first on the bridges. Hmm, looks a bit odd. I'll add something darker later. I applied the same wash a bit everywhere. The rocky surfaces need some more color, and the grass tufts take this very well. Since this is a reddish brown, it fits very well with the autumn theme. Next, I added green to the wash to create a brown-green color. This I smudge around as well, but a bit more sparingly. Then we have the black wash. I used it on the bridges, although I was skeptical at first. The skepticism was unnecessary, that looks good. I also applied this to darken some deeper grooves in the cliffs. Alright, when removing the cardboard, I got the idea to paint some foam in the moving water. Let's do it. 
well, that didn't work. At least not yet. It turns out that dry brushing works best for this. After a while, I think I got it. Tabletop approved. Um, best to keep the camera a bit further, though. On goes the trees. For the sake of convenience, it is so late in the autumn that all the leaves have magically fallen off. To cover some of the naked wood, I used a dark wash. The tiniest details of this diorama are miniature leaves. These are simply birch seeds I collected from the yard. Now this is good enough on its own, but nothing compared to some lore. For several days your party has investigated the infestation of the old town sewers. So far, all you've found are dead children, trouble with the high town guards, and more of those pesky giant rats. But on this lovely morning walk, it seems that the source of the disease has presented itself willingly, for you are too late. As the first waves of sickly green water emerge from the well, the paladin says, I smell only death and corruption, as he makes a vow to end all evil. Down streams, you see frogs transforming Yuck! into disfigured monsters, much like you'd imagine happened to the rats. And above you, you hear a cackling laughter <laughs> echoing within the caves. A tough choice lies ahead. Where will you go? I hope this build convinced you that you can make pretty epic stuff from simple materials. If so, make sure to subscribe, like, and go make something out of yourself. Do you like the videos very much? Consider helping out by supporting me on Patreon. Anyway, I wish you a very epic day. Goodbye.